Stand by for action. Thanks, Joan. My name is Dave Miller. I am the Unpleasant Blind Guy, and I want to welcome you to part two of this episode of the Unpleasant Blind Guy on EDL Radio. Now remember, if you want to contact me with comments, questions, show suggestions, awesome American suggestions, I'm available at UBG Contact on Twitter, or I can also be found as Dave Milner or Agador, that's A-G-G-E-D-O-R, on Mublet, the Tea Party Community, Spreely, Mines, MeWe, or Gab. Now let's begin. Well, Jeff, good on you for uh, for finishing that whole thing. I gotta say that was uh, that was really pretty good, man. Um, Thank you, you know, Mike. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's no problem. Um, yeah, man. I mean, what it what it has to take, um, the kind of fortitude that this man has got um, is amazing. It really is, man. Um, that. Uh, that you just keep going through it and through it and you're fighting for a principle. That's, that's what he's doing. And it has to be said again, that all of the uh, demonstrations and everything in support of Tommy Robinson, uh, this is a de- another uh, demonstration, uh, shall we say, of the fact that those demonstrations did some good. Uh, the the UK government knows that the whole world is watching, and I know that phrase has been overused since <laughs> for about the past 51 years, but it is true, especially in this case. And the UK government did not look good when they imprisoned Tommy Robinson the last time with the treatment of him. I mean, it looked like some sort of, as you say, they say Jeff. It looked like what would happen in a banana republic, and this time was not yep. much better as far as Tommy Robinson being imprisoned for a civil offense, which had been committed by many others, reporters, um, ordinary citizens, other people of that nature, none of whom are in prison right now. Okay, So the UK government still doesn't look good in this. I don't care what Mr. Kemp's uh, documentary is going to say. All right, the truth the truth is right there in front of your eyes. If the law is the law, then it's the law for everyone. And it has to be that way regardless of what country you're in or else uh, that that law is useless. Okay? Uh and Tommy Robinson is bearing up well. I'm very happy to hear about that. And you know, again, it looks like when he comes out, he's going to continue his his works. And it's going to be great. I mean, a documentary coming out, a book coming out. Um, some people, Jeff, are called to tell the truth about things and yeah. called to, to take the slings and arrows um, from, from the opposition. And I think that, uh, you know, in this generation, uh, that's Tommy Robinson. Uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, he's just, just an, amazing, uh, an amazing individual. Yeah, so he that, that's my is. take on I, it, man. I would say, Dave, with them words that you said there, um, and we've got to Vulpal Bites joined. Hi, Paul. Vulpal uh, Bites joined us in the chat with me. Uh, what he said is that there's no TV, no air conditioning, no TV or internet. Well, let, let me tell you, um, you, you know, Vulpal Bite and Gary, that he has got a TV in his... Uh, so they call it a suite. <laughs> a suite? That's what they call it. <laughs> oh my goodness yeah. me! A, a royal hotel suite. Yeah, well that's what he that's what he's got. Yes, it's very hot. He hasn't got no air conditioning, you know, or, or anything like that. But he oh, has yeah. got yeah. a TV, and he is weighed down. As he said, uh, he'll probably need a big bus to get all his mail home <laughs> with him. <laughs> you know, um, and that's what I expected. I expected that him to say that in the letter because. People, the deluge, well, they must be receiving it. It just, you know, it must swamp them under uh, seeing everything that's coming through. And especially, you know, not only that, the, the, the snail mail, not only the snail mail, 
the e- emails, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. As I say, um, but there again, if you want to persecute and prosecute uh, someone who speaks the truth, a journalist, what do you expect? This man is is popular, beyond popular. Uh, you've created, you created the situation by being lapsed with what you've been doing, hiding and That's doing it. things uh, into this, doing things to this country, the people of this country, mm-hmm. and you thought you was going to get away with it. Unfortunately, there are truth tellers, and, and someone who's in my mind at this moment in time, of course, is uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, the the woman who's in prison, prison at this moment in time. Uh, Melanie Shaw, let's not forget this young right. this young lady who's got Absolutely. a family, who's been sectioned, who's been sectioned, ladies and gentlemen. She should have been out about a couple of years ago, whatever it was. They decided to, to, to put her in a, a section so she could live and die in the prison. And we, you know, right. we got a fight for Melanie as well. There's, uh, there's other people in prison for similar, similar things. Uh, not the same extremes as, as Melanie, uh, but I, so I go to bed every night, ladies and gentlemen, and I pray for Melanie to give her strength, that Lord gives her strength for this, uh, what she continues to stand against. I, I don't know the her state of mind, Dave, what they've been doing to her, mm. but it frightens the life out of me. This is your young woman, um, that's quite confident, and now they just messed her up, man. It's just... Right. I'm sorry to be, but it's got to be speak, spoke about, ladies and gentlemen. It's got to be spoke about. This is what they're doing mm. to people that actually see crimes happening. People, young kids being murdered, MPs involved, high-ranking MPs, ladies and gentlemen. You know, not the run-of-the-mill ones, but the top-ranking ones committing awful, awful crimes. And they seem to just... Uh, the, uh, whistleblower like Melanie's come through and uh, speaks up and they decide to lock her up indefinitely uh, and say, oh, she had mental issues. Yeah. And that's how they get rid of you. That's what they do. That's how they rule you. That's you. This is how they rule you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you think and, we're yes, just sitting back? Go on, Dave. Sorry, Dave. Yeah. Go, go. No, no, it's all good. I just, I just want to clarify for Americans and other people who, uh, who may not know what you mean when you say she's been sectioned. And people, she's been put in an insane asylum. Okay, that, that's what's happened to her. First, they, they put her in a regular yep. prison. Now they've put her in an insane asylum, and, and they can hold her for an indefinite period, as Jeff says. They can hold her until the day she dies, um, you know, because, because they have just mentally tortured her uh, so much. And all for threatening to expose the pedophilia that goes on in the higher ranking circles in the government of the UK. And Jeff, to that, I have got a uh, a couple of audios. These are from the uh, satirist um, Soph, who uh, is a big free speech advocate. Now, she's not necessarily uh, a true believer in a lot of the things that she says, but her biggest, truest belief is in free speech. And these these touch on the subject of pedophilia. If you'd like, I can play the first one of these, and then we can uh, we can comment on that one. I know that once that one's done, you may want to call back in. Um, but if you're ready, I'll play this. It'll be about six and a half minutes. Yeah, no, I'm I'm okay for a little while, Dave. But uh, I'll call being All right. just after twenty five past, so we can run a couple okay, of things. Uh, I'm keeping right. on the clock right. myself. So but, but Dave, thank you for giving me an heads up, okay? Um, we have got full fight saying he, he's finding it very mm. difficult to hear uh, hear us. I, I don't know what the uh, the, the the problem is. Um, but yep, not having any problems here, Bort. Yeah, yeah, not having um, any problems here. He goes, he, before that, he said, so why do you Englishmen tolerate such injustice? You know, for... They don't. People might ask that question. Let me just, before we go, i just got to tell Brooke that this is coming to a head. We're fed up with what the police have been doing, leading, uh, you know, people into very dangerous situations, men, women, um, veterans, um, and that those people into dangerous situations. They have now become the enemy. So we've not got it just from one side or the other, like we, there was a pronged effect. We had 
uh, like uh, the Antifa on one side, we had Muslims on the other, and guess what? Who's was leading the, the Arafat? The old bill themselves. Yes, the police themselves. The Sharia compliant uh, wannabe thugs. That's what they are. They are public enemy number one to patriots. They think of us as cockroaches. Yeah, me and you. You patriots across the globe. Our police think of you like your cockroaches. There's the brainwashing of you. That's what they... They had to go to, to special training so they'd get this brainwash crap in their brains, ladies and gentlemen. It's true. Check it out. They've got to go to special training to learn to be total assholes. You know, they've already assholes, but they want to be a triple assholes. Excuse my language, but it's got to be said. Dave, I just wanted to just make a fact about the, the police in this country. You are a total disgrace. You wear that uniform like the SS war is. And don't give me any excuses. We're just following orders. They said the same thing at the Nervine tribe. Just remember. Just remember how, how history repeats itself. Dave, back to you, brother. Well, Jeff, I think I think that is the whole is the whole thrust of uh, of the main banner of the show: to liaise or not to liaise, because yep. uh, when the negotiations uh, in good faith are made with the police, when there's a demonstration, and everyone walks away, and it is supposed that uh, the uh, the demonstrators are not going to be put in danger, and then on the day that's that's turned on its ear. And the police lead peaceful demonstrators uh, into a situation where they have to pretty much run the gauntlet of um, well, Dan, of Danny being, Tomo, Dave, uh, yeah. and a few other lads yeah. broke, went to break the police lines. This is the first time that uh, our guys have actually mm-hmm. um, breached police lines because uh, the situation was so dire. They was more concerned about the kids than everybody that was there, old people. You know, and, um, you know, you just got to do what's right. And just to let you know, 24 hours before, they leaked the information. They leaked this information, where we'd be and everything. So this was mm-hmm. encompassed. We, we, we told, oh, we, this is company. We won't stand up. They leaked it. Okay, guys, out there, you know now what happened. They leaked the whole thing. And Richard Inman had, had said that as well. So you check my, you check the videos out there. Yeah, they leaked it. So we've had enough. We've had enough of this leading us around, trying to cut us, uh, you know, the patriots out there. We've had enough, you know. So there you go. Things are going to change. Things are going to change. As I said, well, I've it, said Dave, enough yeah. is enough. And with that, let me pass it back to you, brother. Yeah. All right. Well, and Jeff, I know you wanted to to, uh, to talk about that. It's very important. Because there may be a lot of people saying, well, the, you know, breaking a police line, that's, that's not peaceful demonstration. But it is, though, when, when they've made a habit of it now of leading uh, peaceful protesters into these situations where they either, where they either put them in, uh, you know, they kettle them, they put them in a small area and let counter demonstrators, who really shouldn't be there in the first place, throw bricks, bottles, use hypodermic needles. Uh, you know, rocks, yep. whatever they can get hold of at them, and things of that nature, um, and and that's just a small list. Okay, uh, there there does come a point when that happens, when enough it becomes enough, and that's what Jeff is talking about. The Danny Tomo did, and uh, you know, personally, I have to say uh, it, that even though this is a situation that the government has uh, has uh, created, it's it's understandable. Why people are beginning to take the stance that they are. Uh, so, Jeff, you know, all I have to say is that God bless the people who go out there and peacefully demonstrate, which, which is yeah, God the bless EDL them does. every single yeah. one of them, yeah. Dave. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, you think you can't a peaceful demonstration, and and then before yeah. you know it, the the people that are supposed to the, to make things, uh, you know, put things in order to keep the civil right, you know, civil uh, mm-hmm. disturbances happening. Uh, are creating those disturbances. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have the enemy out there now. It's open who they are. They are involved in the establishment. They are the lackeys, the boot boys of our governments and the establishment. Mm-hmm. 
out there. So there you go. Yeah. As we said, yeah. because it's true, Dave. I don't say nothing unless it's true, and not you, Dave. But it's true. This is where we are. I do think we could. Do you think we're going to battle? We're going to go. Oh, no. Oh, we're going to get hit by. You know what? All you've done is make things a hell of a lot worse. You keep attacking our people. In the end, unfortunately for you, there's going to be a hit back. Just remember that. Just remember that. That uh, in the end, you know, we don't want it. Who wants it, Dave? Who wants, you know, to, to have that? But, you know, when we're being assaulted, when women have been smashed in the face like another woman was over the week, and no one smashed in the face. They ain't got no video for it, but I, we was told by one of, the, one of the lads there. So, you know, it's coming unbelievable. We're not putting out of it. Have you tried to write it out there, mainstream media? You've got the real media out here now. Citizen journalist media to stuff you. Do what you do the worst. Because you're being exposed every single hour, every single day. You know what? We've had enough of you and all. Dave, there you go, <laughs> pal. Beautiful, Jeff. Man, that's great Thank stuff. You, now, I'm going to go ahead and run this first uh, audio from this young lady. Now, you can find uh, her. Her name is Soph. You can find her videos on, uh, I'm going to say on BitChute. They're, they're also available on YouTube, but I'm pretty sure that YouTube is going to wind up shutting her down because she doesn't play when she makes these. And, and as I say, now, she's not a true believer in, in all the issues that she's talking about, but she is a true believer in free speech. And, uh, you know, as a very young lady, I think she might be 15 at this point, um, She's <laughs> understandably against pedophilia, and uh, I'm playing these audios for a reason. And we're gonna we're gonna get into a story about the FBI if there's time later. We will get to it, but we want you to hear these audios first. And this one's gonna be about five minutes long. Uh, here you go. You guys, by the way, are listening to the English Defense League radio show. Here's part one. Unfortunately, as you know, last month was Pride, which meant we all had to endure 30 days of AIDS-carrying pedophile victims patting themselves on the back for their lifestyles. I had an especially hard time considering I live in California, where there was a puddle of disease load waiting for me whenever I dared to step out of my house. However, there is a silver lining to this cloud of airborne herpes, a learning experience to be derived from that month-long fudge-packing fest. As I'm sure my highly observant audience has noticed, the LGBT community is keen on a accusing any and all critics of homophobia. It's obviously a tactic to effectively divert attention from the rates of STDs and pederasty involving homosexuals, but I think that the term phobic was picked for reasons more Machiavellian than you'd expect. I think they frame their opposition as fearful as opposed to anything else because that's what they want them to be. As Machiavelli said, it's better to be few than to be loved. And whether you agree with that statement or not, I think it's safe to say that militant homosexuals agree with it out of necessity. Most of them are hedonists utterly unable to achieve the love that a married heterosexual couple can, and in the face of that daunting truth, they convince themselves that being feared is preferable. What they fail to notice, or pretend not to know, is that their detractors feel not fear, but disgust. And that's frustrating, because disgust doesn't fit into their narrative. This is also the key to understanding why they don't seem at all affected by the much more tangible threat of Islam. Despite their blatantly anti-homosexual credo, Muslims bond with the gays over one thing, lovelessness. Not all ex are like that, me, all you want, but the polygamous unions of Islam will never attain the love that comes from the monogamous holy matrimony. Uncoincidentally, Muslim communities are also riddled with pedophilia, and they're well known globally for their unconsensual tendencies. Ring a bell? If you think I'm being too harsh, come back to me after you've watched just one of the many videos of half-naked children dancing at pride parades. Before you go, aw, oh, come on man, it's not like that. Take a moment to embrace the burning feeling you get when you see that type of shit. It's not tolerance you have, it's weakness. And it's being exploited for nefarious purposes. Despite it becoming less potent since the mid-2010s, homophobia is still effectively a leash to yank you by when you're not giving sufficient leeway to LGBT depravity. It's been extensively documented, but there's still hesitation to engage when the conversation's about the vices of the gay community. Even tough-talking conservatives can't help but bow down when that rainbow-colored baton strikes the back of their knee. Gay people, in and of themselves, don't pose a threat. 
but undermining the institution of marriage is an astronomical travesty that no one should tolerate. And, as I said before, it works in concert with other anomalies like polygamy, polyamory, and single motherhood. It's almost as if every sexual liberation movement leading up to this point in time was orchestrated in order to weaken the familial structure. And all the fronts are amiable and shiny, so when you attack the concept of gay pride for what they're doing to children, people think of this as us and conclude you're an asshole. It's immorality laundering. They put the indefensible together with the legitimate so that you can't scrutinize it without being called a homophobe. Now, why on earth would anyone be compliant with this, let alone consciously put it forth? Just like Cain murdering his brother for doing better than him, there is resentment against heterosexual couples because gays know that whatever meaning they manage to squeeze out of their relationships will never hold a candle to procreation. Additionally, since they can't reproduce, they have to recruit. So it's beneficial for them to wreck the familial unit. If the parents aren't taking care of the kids, then someone else will. And they like the idea of that someone else being them. Sounds terrible if it weren't for the fact that homosexual men are ridiculously overrepresented in child molestation. This sort of thing doesn't just go away when Taylor Swift makes a music video addressing the hate. If you aren't as masochistic as I am and refuse to watch it, her video has the shittiest, most outdated stereotype known to man. A southern redneck and a sweat-stained wife beater, a trucker cap, and a sign with a misspelling of God hates fags scrawled on it. It's like pop culture is a car with its wheels stuck in the mud and it just keeps accelerating itself deeper into the mire. Throughout popular culture, that primitive view of skepticism is still the same, as if it's the rednecks that are browsing 4chan. Recently, I've been contemplating the subtle ways in which elementary school tried to manipulate me. When the anti-bullying messaging began, they would slightly imply that bullying was the reason that gays were mentally ill. Little sleight of hand tricks like that are the reason people are responsive to the asinine Bernays style propaganda they're exposed to. Only now am I realizing how much these beliefs aren't just random products of open-mindedness. They've been taught to people since they were toddlers. In fact, my old school district is currently conducting a diversity audit of all its library books, making its staff undergo equity training, and bringing chief diversity officers to deliver speeches about bias and inclusivity. A blind man could see that there's something off. As part of a new sex ed curriculum, California students will now hear about anal and repurposing food items as dildos. I wish I was joking, fuck. And according to Orange County, parents just don't have the constitutional right to opt out of it. Well, there you go, guys. And that, Jeff and listeners, <laughs> sums up. She's a sums bit of a firestorm. Like... She is Wow. She, <laughs> you know, she's bang on it. What can I say about that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well done. <laughs> Salute that lady. Yeah. Whoa. Hit him and hit him hard. Yeah. No wonder I just reckon she be uh, YouTube's gonna definitely come down on her, Dave. Oh Don't oh yeah. You know? yeah. Oh yeah. they they're they already had interviews with people who are in charge of some of these uh things like Twitter and, 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 and YouTube and and, uh, and Facebook and things like that and and uh, there, another video that she did, uh, be uh, be not afraid. Uh, which we will eventually play on this show, uh, only because YouTube banned it um, is is what they mentioned. This is this is the kind yeah. of speech that they don't want that that they don't want people to hear that they don't want people to have. And you notice, Jeff, that when she's talking about pedophilia, she's including the ideology of Islam. And of course. my God, man, I can't think of the I don't even I can't even think of the number of stories that we've run about. Uh, Islam and oh. and pedophilia, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's oh, I, I know. We, 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 I don't know. Hundreds upon hundreds, mm-hmm. Dave. You know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's right. Uh, you're trying to get away from that. It's the fact that's happening, but it has. It's been happening yeah. for donkey's years. In fact, yeah, it when it when Islam or the cult of death first uh, uh, got you know was there, established itself. That's when uh-huh. you see it all start. So you think how many, how many millions upon millions of uh, oh, yeah. young girls is that and how are being and young you boys. Know, uh, violated? Let's call it. I don't like using grooming. Yeah. Violated, raped, passed there around, you go, Jeff. trafficked yeah. over century upon century. And what they're trying to still they're going to try and cover it up. They should should try to censor us because we know that this is evil. And we mm-hmm. all 
You can't stop me thinking it's not evil. You think you're going to censor me or kick me off YouTube or whatever? I'm going to find other ways just to let you know. No matter what you say, no matter what you yeah, do, yeah. we'll find places. <laughs> we'll still expose you who's doing this. What you're doing is evil, man. Don't you get it? You are being evil, even though you think you've got a moral code. No, you ain't got no moral code. It's disappeared up your back five years ago. It's mm -hmm. right, Dave, is it? What the hell's wrong with these people? I don't know. Some of it is just absolutely manic crazy. Oh, oh it is, yeah, but... Yeah, and and my brother, do you want to call back in now? Because I, I noticed it's about 25 you, you after each. Bang right. on, mate. Spot on that. As that at a time struck... Yeah, <laughs> the nice one there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any, Dave, thank you, mate. Uh, let me pass it back uh, to you, buddy. No You're problem. Right and while, all right, now, while Jeff calls back in, uh, and before we get into part two of these uh, of uh, these audios, I'll let you guys know, first of all, uh, that the English Defense League uh, radio show is uh, part of the SHR Media Network, and we're not going to play the... Uh, SHR Media promos this time, but they will be on the end of uh, the shows as I reproduce them for uh, UBG on EDL. That's right. The uh, program uh, is also something that you can hear at the Unpleasant Blind Guy page at uh, Spreaker.com, and that's going to be repeated uh, through the SHR Media YouTube page, and some of this stuff will also come out on the Western Free Radio Network. Uh, so you guys will get a chance to hear that. And my regular show times, by the way, are at uh, 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. That's 6 p.m. Uh, in the U.K., 1 p.m. Eastern, and at 12 a.m. Eastern in the States on Saturdays. That's uh, 5 a.m. in the U.K. So you guys will be able to hear this. And that is it for this time. Next time, part three. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for listening, and may your God go with you. Goodbye. The Unpleasant Blind Guy is copyright 2019. Anno Domini. Now for Dave's Canes. Extras that help you Navigate the new media world. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. Hey, this is Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Join us for The Right Way with Shannon and Mike, Monday through Thursday from 7 to 9 a.m. right here on SHR Media. Why are they joining us? For fun things like sports, politics, Oh, maybe some news and entertainment? And all kinds of other things. Money and recipes and events, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so join us Monday through Thursday, 7 to 9 a.m. here on shrmedia.com. From a public locker inside a dilapidated Long Island rail station comes a show designed to piss off liberals using truth, facts, and ridicule. The Lid Radio Show, featuring the conservative voice from the People's Republic of New York. The Lid himself, Jeff Dunnett. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com. At Lid Radio, we fight for the truth, the justice, and a good kosher T-bone. If you don't listen, Hillary Clinton might sneak into your bedroom in her house coat late at night and blame you for her election loss. It's the Lid Radio Show with Jeff Dunnett. It's your business diva here, Melanie Collette. I am inviting you to a front row seat as I discuss some of the most intriguing details of wealth and finance with today's movers and shakers in the world of business. Listen in and discover financial truths on a global, domestic, and household scale. Uncover topics that will impact your wallet today and in the future. Money Talk with Melanie airs Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. East, 2 p.m. West, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Talk Radio. You can't afford to miss it.
new show on the SHR Media Network, Sackheads Against Tyranny. On shrmedia.com, go there quick like a bunny, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, every Wednesday, live and direct on the SHR Media Network, shrmedia.com. Be there. Broadcasting behind enemy lines in occupied California, a mere two miles from the state capital, the bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon Radio Show can be heard every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific and 11 p.m. Eastern, only on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com to listen. You can also watch on the SHR Media Facebook page and the SHR Media YouTube channel. No goldfish were abused in the making of this ad. Hey girls, Carry Girl Gear is here. More and more women every day are concealed carrying, participating in competitive shooting, and getting firearms training. It's not a boys club anymore, and we don't have to shop in their stores anymore either. Finally, a cool and unique clothing line just for women. Dope tees and hats for the patriotic concealed carry and 2A girl. So what are you waiting for? Go check out carrygirlgear.com today. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network.